I have been getting the same question over and over again from real estate entrepreneurs, capital raisers, passive investors, CEOs of real estate companies. And that question is, given the amount of uncertainty in the marketplace right now because of COVID, should we be doing deals? Are there any deals that make sense right now? And so to answer that question, we created a webinar with three panelists that are elite, savvy, sophisticated real estate entrepreneurs to ask them that exact question. We've got a senior living consultant, which is obviously interesting given the amount of attention to that space, Jillian Hellman, who is the CEO of Realty Mogul, one of the most premier crowdfunding portals in the United States, and Josh Satin, who is the director of acquisitions over at Gelt, has about a billion dollars under management. So these three people answer that question, and then, of course, we get into the details. So you can get access to that free webinar at cfcmentorshipprogram.com slash doing deals, and I'll see you on the inside. Look, we all know that real estate has created more millionaires than pretty much any other business. The problem is, it's also created a lot of heartaches and bankruptcies. Sure, we can get access to a ton of real estate education on the internet, but that's precisely the problem. How can we tell which strategies will consistently produce asymmetric returns and which should be avoided at all costs? My goal is to give real estate entrepreneurs, capital raisers, and investors all of the secrets so that we can grow our portfolios without dealing with costly investment nightmares. And that's what this program is all about. I'm Hunter Thompson, and welcome to the Cashflow Connections Real Estate Podcast. So there's a term that's been coming up a lot recently, and I think it's worth paying attention to because it shows that there's a piece of the real estate industry that is evolving as we speak. And the term is the hybrid approach to investing. Now, what this typically refers to is that because of the amount of increased interest that there's been in the world of passive investing, there have been people that say, look, I've spent all this time curating these lists of sponsors, learning a lot about due diligence, learning about how this sector works, And I'd like to make a career out of it, but I don't want to be an operator. How can I participate passively but create a business? This can take many forms, which we'll talk about today, but a lot of people refer to this as a quasi-hybrid approach. You're being active in your passive investment strategies. Now, of course, this is something that's evolving as we speak. Ten years ago, this is something that no one was really talking about because the world of passive investing wasn't really growing. It wasn't really significant. There weren't enough people that even knew what that meant. Going back to 2010, 2011, when I started to realize that the way that I wanted to participate in the space was to simply provide capital or act as a placement agent, the people that loved me around me thought I was crazy because, well, most of the time people that aren't already familiar with syndications believe that it's some sort of Ponzi scheme. It's very, very common. But 10 years later, a lot has changed. So Now, it's very clear that the quasi-hybrid approach can be multi-pronged. It can allow you to do a lot of different things in the sector, but still avoid being an operator and focusing on their operations and property-specific type of implementation in terms of business plan. So let me give you a couple of examples as far as what the hybrid approach would entail. You can act as a capital placement agent. You could act as a registered investment advisor where you take the fact that you know all these great operators and you advise people on making investment decisions. You could also create your own fund of funds, have people invest in your special purpose vehicle, and then invest in other sponsors' deals. All of those are ways to make money, but without actually operating the real estate. Now, those are some that are are more common, and that's specifically on the capital placement side, but there's other parts of this industry as well. And the reason I'm saying this is that there's so much interest in this space that it could be possible for you to position yourself in one of these spaces and then ride a tidal wave of interest as it continues to come. You know, I think that there's actually a tsunami of interest in terms of the number of people that are likely going to be investing passively over the next 10 years or so. It's only going to go one direction. These investments are just so much more compelling. So I think that any participation in the space is likely going to be lucrative if you pay attention and get a coach and join a mentorship, blah, 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 blah. If you focus and take it more seriously than your competitors, there's a lot of good things coming your way. So not only can you act as a placement agent, but you can also do things like act as a due diligence consultant. So as an example, if you've done 10 of these deals, you invested passively in 10 or 15 or 20 deals, 
you have a very good vision of what is out there. You have a very good understanding of the spectrum of what people should see, not only in terms of the actual documents, while that is important, but what about the conversations with the sponsor that you have? What about which asset classes are actually looking favorable, especially now in the wake of COVID? You have a good sense of this, and we start to get in these echo chambers where you start to think that everyone knows which asset classes are recession resistant, which investment theses are actually going to work out in the long term, which risk profiles are appropriate, which ones aren't. I'm sure anyone that knows you, if you've made it clear that you're becoming or are already an expert passive investor or even real estate operator, you probably have friends send you deals all the time that you wouldn't touch with a 10-foot pole. Hey, I'm doing this condo development in Alaska. Well, you can help people do that. You can charge them a fee for that consultation. Something else is marketing consultant. Again, if you have a very good concept of what's available in the space and a very good understanding of the spectrum of what is out there in terms of what the marketing documents look like, you can get paid tens of thousands of dollars to get companies up to the level that you and I are most familiar with seeing. That marketing piece doesn't just apply to, let's say, the creation of the executive summary, but something I've talked about many times and I'm going to keep talking about it is this concept of narration curation or narration formulation, creating and telling the story of the deal. Your ability to do that is so much more important and potentially lucrative than the deal itself because every deal that you're going to see has somewhere between a 12 and a 15 or a 16% IRR. What really makes investors move forward is their emotional connection with the deal. So a way to have a high degree of emotional connection is give investors a lot of reasons why it's really compelling. Another way of looking at that is give investors a lot of reasons why they're not going to sound stupid investing in those deals. Because I think I've mentioned this, the number one rule of investing is said to be don't lose money. But I think the real number one rule of investing is don't sound like an idiot. And so if you can give your investors all the tools they need to tell their friends why they're not an idiot for investing in these deals, that can be a very lucrative position for you to play the hybrid approach, taking all of the Rolodex of contacts and systems and relationships that you've created over the years, and then doing marketing consulting for these sponsors, especially those that are just getting to 10 million, 20 million, $50 million in assets under management. Now, Of course, when doing something like this, the space is evolving. So you're incurring some risk. There's uncertainty. You're going to be kind of an innovator in the space. And in the world of real estate, it's not really required that you be an innovator to have a lucrative career. So you're obviously incurring some risk that may not be 100% necessary. But just keep an eye on that reality. If you're going down the world of being a due diligence consultant or a marketing consultant and you're doing this quasi hybrid approach, the fact that you'll probably be one of a very few amount of people you know doing that, just recognize you have to make your fees enough to make up for that because you're walking on the moon in a way. Now, when it comes to walking on the moon, there's a really important concept here, which is as you start to do things that the market has not quite adapted to yet, you need to be aware of when to persevere and when to pivot. So if you're going down the route of doing this hybrid approach, you're going to start to hear a lot of friends and family say, hey, that's not really a job. Hey, that doesn't really exist. Hey, there's a reason that there's not a hundred other versions of what you're trying to do. And so you have to be very cautious about who you listen to, about who you let in your inner circle really influence your way of thinking, because making the decision to put the blinders on and not let haters tell you how to run your business is really, really powerful. But at the same time, If you later find out that all those people were right, you can waste a lot of time. So just be knowledgeable, be aware, be having your eyes focused on the way the wind is blowing so you can know when to persevere or pivot if you're going down this hybrid approach model. And you'll start to see more and more people are going to mention this because there's a tidal wave of interest coming to the space. We start to see all these podcasts popping up, all these new operators, and I'm definitely sympathetic to the fact that new operators bear a significant amount of risk because of the business plan implementation that they haven't really proven out their track record yet. But it isn't the case that 
there's going to be some massive pullback and there's going to be less people interested in real estate, especially passive real estate in 10 years. That's not going to happen. It could be the case that some operators have some distressed assets and they may exit, but now the cat is out of the bag. Now the Jobs Act exists. It's very, very wise as a entrepreneur to identify where tidal waves are coming. And then if you can ride those waves, it will likely make up for some of the mistakes you will make along the way. So you can still have a potentially lucrative career, even if you make mistakes, because the tide is rising or the wave is rising, whatever metaphor you want to use. All right. Hope that helps. I have been getting the same question over and over again from real estate entrepreneurs, capital raisers, passive investors, CEOs of real estate companies. And that question is, given the amount of uncertainty in the marketplace right now because of COVID, should we be doing deals? Are there any deals that make sense right now? And so to answer that question, we created a webinar with three panelists that are elite, savvy, sophisticated real estate entrepreneurs to ask them that exact question. We've got a senior living consultant, which is obviously interesting given the amount of attention to that space, Jillian Hellman, who is the CEO of Realty Mogul, one of the most premier crowdfunding portals in the United States, and Josh Satin, who is the director of acquisitions over at Gelt, has about a billion dollars under management. So these three people answer that question. And then, of course, we get into the details. So you can get access to that free webinar at cfcmentorshipprogram.com slash doing deals. And I'll see you on the inside.